Well, hi, AP. Hope you're doing well when you watch this video. So this is lecture two in the DNA unit. Um, this is all about DNA replication, okay? Continuity of life. And so how is it copied? Well, first off, when does this happen? F space in the cell cycle. Why does it happen? Repair, replacement. Um, you know, sometimes even it's unregulated, which means cancer it happens too much. But DNA replication ensues continuity continuity of hereditary inflammation. So it's built in the five prime, three prime. Polymerase, which is the builder, reads three prime to five prime, which these are just different carbons. And I can show you a picture in a second. But replication is when one strand is old and one strand is new. Okay. Helic so these are all the enzymes you need to know about. Helicase, topoisomerase, which relaxes supercoiling. Helicase unzips it. DNA polymerase is the builder. It requires RNA primers. Polymerase synthesizes in a leading, like continuously on two strands, right? Leading versus lagging. And then ligase is the glue, and it joins the fragments together on the lagging strand. Of course, those fragments are called Okasaki fragments. But these are this is all great note cards to make right here. Just great note cards to make. And I guess like my pen's lagging a little bit, but anyways, so let's continue onward. How do I do this? Oh, oh there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so the relationship between structure and function is apparent. Watson and Crick, of course, modeled it. Brilliant people. Rosalind Franklin is a you know, interesting side story when, you know, her work was stolen um, by Maurice Wilkins, of course, Chargoff's rule. And then you need to know all the scientists before that, you know, Griffith, Hershey and Chase, um, you know, Chargoff, all those guys really and girls um, really helped understand DNA as a transforming factor. DNA is responsible for, you know, carrying genes. And then, of course, modeling enabled that. So. Here's the principal strand, right? Five prime to three prime, A binds to T, C binds to G. And then that's base pairing. And then you can see how it separates. And we get a bit two identical strands because base pairing allows that for allows that to happen. Okay. There's a lot of videos online you can watch. Um, we've shown some in class. So DNA replication is a process of copying a DNA molecule. And semi-conservative. So one is old, one's the original, yep. and then one um you know, the parental model, and it serves as a template for the new strand, right? And so, like I just showed you, if A and T, um, you know, separate, then they'll be exactly the same in the new strand, okay? And so, here's kind of what it looks like. DNA polymerase builds, it's the builder, and this is a very, you know, basic model of what's happening. This is only showing one enzyme of the many that are involved. So since the two strands are complementary, each strand stores the information necessary to reconstruct the other. So the parent molecule unwinds, and two new daughter strands are built based upon base parent rules. Again, that's for when Chargoff, who was responsible for doing that. So one old and one new. Okay. And then there was a lot of competing models early on in trying to figure out how DNA replicates. Um, you know, conservative would be old and new. And of course, they radioactively labeled this stuff, and they determined it has to be this based upon math. And so you kind of see right here, um, these experiments, you know, showed that they had to be separate. Um, you know, didn't work here. So this result eliminate the, the result basically eliminate these two. I'm not going to get into the specifics for time, but this is the one that was shown to be true. One completely old strand and one completely new strand. Okay. How important is this? The bacterium E. coli has a single chromosome about 4.6 million nucleotide base pairs. You you have 3.2 billion, give or take. In a favorable environment, an E. coli cell can copy all of its cells in vitamin 2 in less than an hour. Okay? And each of your somatic cells has 46 DNA molecules, one long double helical molecule per chromosome. In all, that represents about 6 billion, yeah, 3.2 billion on one side, so six, roughly 6 billion. Or over 1,000 times more DNA found in its in most bacterial cells. 1,000 times more. If we were to print the one-letter symbols for these bases, the size of the type you are now reading, or I'm reading, the six billion nucleotide 
pairs of information in diplos that would fill about 1,400 biology textbooks. Yet it takes one of your cells just a few hours to copy this DNA during S phase. Maybe up to eight. This replication of an enormous amount of genetic information achieved with very few errors, only one per 10 billion nucleotides. The copy of DNA is remarkable. I mean, and that, of course, the complexity of all that, the brilliance of it, um, hopefully that points you to faith. Okay, so yeah, you have to unwind the DNA, separate it, new nucleotides, all of that. So let me show you here again, 5 prime to 3 prime. The 5 prime in is the phosphate. So again, think about an enzyme, right? Polymerase is an enzyme. ASE means enzyme. So it has an active site, which means something has to come in correctly for it to bind. And so it reads 3 to 5. So it reads it kind of upside down, but it builds it 5 to 3. Okay, definitely need to know that. That's definitely a learning objective for this unit. Okay, once part is a lagging strand, that's Okasaki fragments. And so DNA replication starts at the origin of replication or ORI site. The replication fork is the site where DNA unwinds. Again, that enzyme that does that, again, you need to know these players in the game. The enzyme that unwinds it is helicase. Okay, so moving on, we have, oh, my bad. So prokaryotic, there's a difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic replication. Prokaryotic replication, let me, let me highlight a few things here. It's a single chromosome, okay? Replication moves around the circular DNA in both directions, so it's like it goes, you know, of course, like this way and this way, like around in a circle, um, proceeds in both directions, um, produces two identical circles, process begins at the origin of replication, about 40 minutes, but the cell divides every 20 minutes, okay? Um, so a new round of replication can begin before even the previous round is completed. Yeah, and of course it happens quicker because less DNA than we have. Um, here's what it kind of looks like. Replication is complete. And so here's the difference in eukaryotic. Eukaryotic is we have, again, a linear chromosome. And so we have a... That's crazy. Sorry, I'm still like, I'm trying to do this on an old computer and it's not working out too well. But, um, and so you can see there's multiple or like origin and replication sites because of all of our DNA, we just can't do one. Like we would not be able to maintain homeostasis. So we have multiple ORI sites that allow us to continue replication. Um, it would take weeks <laughs> to fully replicate a chromosome. And so DNA replication begins at numerous points. And so you need to know the different players. Um, we've already talked about all of that. Here's just another picture. Here's just another picture of showing this. Um, and so here's the different players, okay? A single strand of binding proteins is an additional player uh, that stabilizes the DNA strand. Topoisomerase relieves the strain, kind of like relaxes it. And so here's topoisomerase. So this is a great picture kind of study. Topoisomerase relaxes it. Primase lays down the primer. Okay, which is RNA. RNA is the same as DNA, except a different sugar and, you know, ribose instead of deoxyribose and uracil instead of thymine. And here's our replication fork where, you know, fork in the road, helicase unwinds it, and these, these SSBP pro, SSB proteins are stabilizing it, you know, because, of course, kinetic energy, everything's bouncing around pretty good in there. And so... It's synthesized by primase, the primer. Again, polymerase needs a primer to, to work. And so here's a great picture, kind of talking about what we're doing here. So here's the leading strand. You don't have to know the differences between polymerases, I believe, for this, uh, the test in May, but polymerase three is on the leading strand. Polymerase one build, you know, um, builds from those, you know, removes the primase, primers and builds on the lagging strand. You can see primase lays down the RNA primer. Here's polymerase building again. This would be topoisomer. Well, actually, this is probably the case. Topoisomer is way over here, um, somewhere. And then the SSBPs are right here, stabilizing the DNA, allowing these guys to do their job. And then ligase is the gluer, which allows the fragments, the Okasaki fragments, to be put together. And so, again, here's a primase, laying down the primer, DNA polymerase builds, and then um, replicates in the five prime to three prime direction. Again, it's red three to five. It builds five to three. 
And then again, here's just the fragments. You can see since this side comes out uh, five to three, you have to read it backwards. You know, we have to wait to come out, so that's why it's built in fragments. Um, a different RNA polymerase then replaces the primary DNA. That's RNA DNA polymerase one. Not again. Pretty sure you don't have to know that. And then ligase does this mode. Ligase does this. It takes this water right here and removes it. Condensation reaction, and um, that's how they smooth out the strands. Okay. And then here is just another picture of the process. Ligase joining it together. And then just another picture for you to kind of look at and study. If you can look at this picture, and let me show you something that I would kind of do. Like I would look at a picture like this, but I would take out all the words. Like I would look at it blank. And then I would see if I can correctly explain what is happening that is that would be helpful like if you can take out all the words and just have the images which i'm sure if you look up blank pictures online and if you could just if you could do that like you really know what you're talking about okay so the proteins that participate in dna form a large complex of replicating machine and uh, here's just another kind of like model that some people think that it works like more of a trombone model with the lagging strand kind of loops around which we saw in the video and there's connecting proteins that help stabilize and let dna polymerase build in these fragments that it has to um with the lagging strand i say so errors in the dna you know one in 10 billion which is insane to think about like my goodness like I'm, i've made more errors in this you know nine minute video than, than this than this happens but uh, just insanely impressive. Um, DNA polymerase is proofread, newly made DNA, replace any incorrect nucleotides. And since they're going at insane speed, again, this is, I mean, if you just pause and think about this, that, and it's happening in millions of your cells, like right now, it's just incredible to think about. So a mismatch repair of DNA, other enzymes correct errors in base pairing. A hereditary defect in such enzyme is associated with a form of colon cancer. And colon cancer has a really deadly cancer if you don't catch it early. And um, so there's two repair mechanisms, proofreading and mismatch repair. Other proteins scan for mismatch repairs and then replace them with, again, proteins, enzymes, right? And so if these proteins have an error themselves in their DNA code, in the gene that codes for them, that can increase your risk of cancer because your, your mismatch repair system is not working correctly. Um, and so it all starts with DNA. That's why the central dogma of biology is so important. And so you can see right there, getting, crossing out the yellow and replacing it. The error rate after proofreading is extremely low, but not zero. And so the sequence changes may become permanent, pass on to the next generation. These changes are the source, okay, mutations, right? Don't think mutations are always bad, sometimes neutral. So if you want to use some math here, you know, math symbols, some mutations are positive. Most are neutral, no effect, but some are detrimental to an organism's health. And so genetic variation, we have to have variety for natural selection to act upon, and that is what allows it to act, okay? And so you can see right here, uh, repeated rounds of replication produce shorter DNA. So this leads us into like, why doesn't DNA like disappear com like completely? Because it can't complete the five prime ends of the dosha. So every single time replication happens, DNA, molecules shorten and so this is an amazing topic that we don't have time to get into but i definitely encourage you to google this and look this up um, just to learn if you're interested in learning telomeres this is this is involved with aging and some people have longer telomeres than others and some people um and and they age differently and this is a big reason why i mean my dad's in hospice and and they actually talk about this stuff telomeres and the doctors do and what he works with and all of that and so it's it's pretty impressive that if you click on this link, which let me just click on it right now. Let's see if it pulls it up. I might have to exit out of this. So I'm investigating using this computer. Um, honey. Okay. Yeah, so this website, are telomeres the key to aging and cancer? And so, yeah, each time 
the telomere. So this is kind of like aglets on a shoestring. Let me show you what this means. Um, well, that doesn't look good. There we go. <laughs> and so, um, so you, there's like this repeated like cap on DNA. And so here's the telomere, right? Just this repeated cap, and every single time it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, telomerase is an enzyme that repairs it. Um, telomerase actually can make a cell immortal because it can keep replacing them, replacing them. Um, you can see right there the term immortal. And so cells normally divide only about 50 to 70 times with telomer telomeres getting progressively shorter. And telomeres do not shorten in tissues where the cells do not continue by, such as heart muscle tissue. And so you can see right here, it's just kind of protective ends on a chromosome. And so telomeres in cancer, telomeres in aging. I mean, if telomerase makes cancer cells immortal, could prevent normal cells from aging. Scientists are not yet sure. They're, they're doing a lot of research in the field. Yeah, telomerase is that enzyme that repairs the ends of chromosomes is active in many cancers. And so here's like some factors in aging. The fountain of youth. We live in Florida, right? <laughs> Ponce de Leon and and everything. And so it's just it's just kind of incredible to think about. Um, and then of course life expectancy at birth. It has been going up. You know, God has all of our days written down in His book, and so He's in charge. He's good. But uh, but yeah, I just I just want to share that with you because it's just kind of impressive. Uh, telomeres are repetitive sequences. And then they just protect the ends of a shoe, uh, of a chromosome like aglets on a shoestring. And so you can see right here, there's a telomere. It gets shorter and shorter, and you always kind of miss a little bit. Telomerase repairs it. Chromosome ends become too short. The chromosomes lose their integrity. Apoptosis, that's a term we need to know about, right? And telomerase can rebuild them. And again, this enzyme is highly expressed in cancer cells. And so um, if gene expression... High levels of telomerase is added to human cells and culture. Their telomeres do not shorten, and the cells become, look at that word, immortal. It's crazy to think about. Let's click on this link here. This is just a research article that I found um, a year or so ago. And uh, let me see if it, it pops up here. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm on like a 15-year-old laptop, so it's uh, taking a little bit. <laughs> But, um, you know, hopefully it won't take too long. Let me click on it again. Maybe, maybe it's going to. Oh, there we go. Nope, oh, twice. That's why. Uh, cookies, always cookies. Okay, look at this. Telomerase reactivation reverses tissue degenerate, degeneration in aged telomerase deficient mice. So, that's a fancy way of saying. Telomere damage as a driver of age-associated organ decline disease risk, and they were able to reverse that by using the processes we're learning about. I mean, just think about the implications of this. And so here's just some questions you can kind of look over. So thank you so much for reading. Sorry, I'm talking a little monotone, but I um, hope this was helpful. Um, more videos are coming. God bless.